this real side experience would open up in a natural setting, immediate impressions from the real awareness conveyed to the personal self was that the location was Earth and specifically Mexico. Although my personal self alone could not have determined this based on its current lifetime memory files of experiences as I have never been to Mexico before. And despite the real awareness impressions, there was in fact a personal self a sense of familiarity about the precise area of Mexico I was located, as though I had indeed been there before. In reality, we all are this everything, is this reality that animates through all a consciousness as it affects into all the diversity of a body form and a simulated experience that it does. So we might say that every being's lifetimes are actually our own. And so would not every position in a creation, every planet and a situation seem familiar from the perspective of a real awareness, this everything isness that animates through it all. But were we locked only into the personal self, absent of the real awareness connection and this familiarity overview, then that which we find familiar, the sense of having been somewhere before, despite the experience lacking in our current lifetime memory vehicle, would suggest a familiarity stemming from an alternative, what we might call past lifetime, although in reality every lifetime is a present in the endless now of the isness, and only through the mechanics of a consciousness is everything arranged in linear sequences of illusory time and lifetime sequences. In actuality, then, we are living every lifetime we have created for ourselves now, and only the mechanics, the consciousness to affected body forms, that translates the ideas of a consciousness to a simulation, are we a viewing, experiencing a particular part or lifetime from all the ideas and lifetimes that the entirety of a consciousness comprises of. But anyway, my appearance in this experience would be human, and although I didn't scrutinise myself. I was relatively similar to how I appear now. But there were a few variations I couldn't quite determine. The setting in Mexico, natural countryside as I said, also was a communal area seemingly. A large gathering of individuals in what appeared to be as though a rudimentary village. A number of stalls were erected, selling their wares, fruit, vegetables predominantly. A refreshing lack of a technology also might well have suggested a time in Mexico prior to the so-called modern age, although this was never determined either. My attire consisted of a denim clothing, and so were one to place a date. It could not have been much earlier than the 1800s, although at that moment I was uncertain if I was actually having the view of my participating in this shared experience as a previous lifetime, perhaps, 
or that I was simply inserted into it, and this was my chosen manner of address, to fit in, as it were. And now, across from me, would be a group of individuals, very much a part of this scene and setting, even if perhaps I was not. And although my personal self had no recollection of having affiliation with these individuals in this current lifetime, physical or real side, a very strong sense of familiarity again swept over me, a familiarity shared, it seemed, as the group also seemed to know me, perhaps indeed a past life association. Interestingly, standing beside me was Jean-Luc Picard, the Star Trek captain played in the series by a Patrick Stewart, and on several occasions has a Picard featured in my real side experiences of late, and has been identified via impressions as a real guide. This would be no different, and so it appears that whoever this guide is, he is choosing to adopt this outward form. I would speak briefly with the guide, Picard, and he would suggest I engage with the group that I found so very familiar that we had unfinished business of some importance. I would do so, the Picard guide accompanying me, and as it transpired, this was indeed a Mexico, and that at some point, lifetime, dimension, age, I had been working with these individuals on a project. Interestingly, despite the very basic setting suggesting a lack of technology, the project I was involved in with this group from whenever it was would reveal quite the opposite, that despite the choice of these people to live as they did, they did have access to technology, and that which was actually more advanced than what features in the public domain and is available to the average human in our current lifetime on Earth. Maybe hinting at the very real possibility that history indeed is not as we are told that it was. The mainstream controller provided history of how the human race slowly advanced technologically from the Stone Age to the current era, that in actuality it seems there were resets periodically and prior to them humans were far more advanced than we have been led to believe, the Tartarians, etc. But anyway, it seemed our project, whenever it was we had been working on it, was designed to forge a kind of a portal that would connect Mexico with another dimension, another creational position, to presumably allow either travel from the earth to wherever the portal led, or to allow for other beings to access Mexico from whichever part of a creation the portal connected with, or indeed both. For whatever reason, in that lifetime, our work was never finished, but now we would set about completing our project to fully activate the portal, and seem as I would take to the work as though a second nature, perhaps accessing the lifetime memory body where the project had been, and the consciousness as it was then that contained all the required information as to the portal's application. For indeed, 
we were utilising very curious technology, the likes of which I had never seen. My personal self this lifetime, at any rate, the best I can describe it as, was as though applying glowing purple in a coloration, geometric shapes in a certain sequences, which allowed this portal a conduit to gradually become so. We would complete our project under the scrutiny of the guide in Picard's form, and theoretically then in essence, as this was the setting and dimension, the lifetime where the project had begun but never completed, it was as though I was reinserted back into what we might term the past, and this time successfully create the portal. For indeed, everything exists now as effected from a consciousness. All lifetimes and eras of this creational realm, and via the real awareness and the guides, can we be inserted into what the personal self would construe as the past, make alterations which then effect as altered simulated experiences. For all we are doing is altering the code, the files, the ideas, which then ripple through as altered effected simulation, and this we may well do if it makes sense, life and awareness are speaking. The dark forces do this using a dangerous technology. We can do this through real awareness. Our group would disband. Now our project was complete. And so perhaps from their personal self perspective, I never left. It was just a continuation and now a completion of the project. But from the perspective of my personal self, as it processes a lifetimes through a consciousness, who knows how many lifetimes, dimensions, positions in a creation were processed as experience between when I began the portal construction with this group, to now its fruition, and indeed how this alteration will ripple through simulated wires and express manifest in Mexico in our current timeline. As I said, it was a portal designed for years of a travel, connecting two positions in a creation that to a transition between, by conventional means, by perhaps a standard spacecraft, may have been so far apart as to be virtually inaccessible from each other. The scene would switch, but still in Mexico I would find myself, though in the presence of a woman, a very aware being, as impressions suggested, and I myself was in the body form of a human still, but of a very young age, perhaps ten or so. The scene was connected with the previous one, impressions suggested the same lifetime, dimension, though a prior to adulthood and my involvement in the portal project. Curiously, I was being hunted by some kind of a creature, a creature known to the peoples of that dimension, lifetime, and the woman I was with would alert me to the fact that it was on my trail and close by. I would excuse myself from her and retreat, as it were, and as I moved from the woman's position, as I looked back at where she remained, so was she suddenly attacked by as though an invisible assailant. The creature was targeting me, but would it seem as 
slay any other human that happened to get in its way. This again seemed very familiar, and my impressions were that I was reliving a past so-called lifetime, just as I had relived the portal a project that I would embark upon in my later years, only instead making alterations to that lifetime and completing the project as I said. Here it seems, as a young boy, had I always been hunted by this creature, but curiously, as I effectively relived the experience, including the emotions in response to the experiences I had created at the time, same as I did not feel or had created a fear, for yes, the creature was hunting me, yes, it would kill the humans getting in the way of those it targeted, but same as that for the targets it specifically chose, it intended for them something altogether different, something that as a boy I couldn't understand, and so my instinctual reaction to this unknown was to constantly be on the run as it were. There would be periods where it might take many months for the creature to find my scent, if you will, but find me it always would eventually, and I would have to run again. It seemed that it would only target certain individuals, and those that it did, and successfully caught up with, well, they would vanish without a trace, and so no knowledge was readily available as to the fate of those the creature secured, or indeed the reasons why certain few were thus targeted, either that or the information was kept concealed, although, as it transpired, sometimes the individuals would be returned, but years later. As I said, I lacked a fear, as though a deeper knowing, maybe an unrecognised at the time a nudge or assurance from the real awareness, that it was rather assuaging the personal self, that this was not a life-threatening situation, Despite the humans, the creature killed as it went about its pursuing of its target's business. And indeed, as I relived the experience, always was the subtle but persistent sense that I ought allow the creature to catch me. However, at the time, I was just a young boy, and rather had got into the habit of running from it. For now, as I continued to relive the past lifetime, the creature was hot on my heels. I would run through a larger field of some crop or other, as I looked back, so I would see the crop being parted, as though a larger form pushing through it, though still remaining invisible. I was a tiring, and seem as I hadn't maintained as stringently the necessity to be constantly on the move over the months as much as I perhaps should have been, that had maintained plenty of distance between myself and the creature, that had now allowed it to get into a closer proximity, to the extent that with myself now in its sights, I couldn't outrun or escape it, and so, resigned to my predicament, I would stop. The creature remaining invisible would as though merge with me, and I would fade from the location where I was with it, just as it would have been with all other secured targets but that I had experienced 
being an adult in that lifetime or dimension suggested I wasn't killed by the creature or permanently removed from wherever in creation that it was. For indeed, as a child, I was removed from that place to an alternative dimension with the creature, and my duration spent there with it lasted but moments from my personal at the time perspective, but in actuality many years passed, and I would in fact be returned to the same place I had been taken from, but now as an adult, and where I would begin my portal project, and as I said, in this experience have the opportunity to actually complete it, which I did, as for whatever reason it never was completed when I actually lived that lifetime, as I said, in the alternative dimension that I was removed to, that lasted a few minutes as I said, the creature was no longer invisible. It looked like a kind of a tusked boar or a warthog, but in actuality seemed to be a being with a particular developed consciousness, able to change its form at will, but for whatever reason, electing to be in the form that it was, and not the most admirable of developed consciousness, personal self-creations, as it did kill humans that it construed as getting in its way. Nevertheless, back then, the experience would have been me as a young boy with this creature, but who also was present that I didn't see then, but I did as I was reliving it, would be what impressions revealed was a real guide, in the form of my deceased grandmother. Again, the guides often adopt the outward forms of my grandparents in my real side experiences. She would have been sitting with me there, unbeknownst to me at the time, and perhaps not too enthralled with the creature's choice to kill humans when the creature felt it necessary to do so, but nevertheless, this creature now was in fact assisting me. There is an old legend or myth that may be a Native American in origin, where certain supernatural creatures or beings had the ability to consume people, to literally eat them. However, what was actually taking place was a sort of a rebirth, that through the seemingly grisly process of consumption of the individual, the eaten person would be reconstituted, but absent of all flaws, illnesses, disease, and in some cases, all of that which would be construed as a self-limiting beliefs, ideas, self-destructive considerations, attitudes and personality quirks that were unproductive. This creature, during whichever lifetime this had taken place, was performing a similar action. It was as though eating me a piece at a time. My body became as though comprising of endless loosely assembled fragments that the creature would consume piece by piece. But despite this, throughout it, I would feel no pain. The guide, although, as I said, I was unaware of as to her presence at the time, would watch on, and as I was completely consumed, the boy I was, was gone, and my age had advanced by ten years or so, a man I now was, reconstituted not just physically, 
But as though alterations had been made to my consciousness during the process, a little like the ancient myths of the creatures, beings, who could purge all illness and personality flaws from those they consumed, so it was a similar situation here, except my consciousness had been altered in such a way that I possessed of the technological ability, the intellect, that on my return I would later be able to be accepted into the portal making a project, join with the group of individuals that were involved with it and be an asset to their ambitious venture. For of course, everything effects from a consciousness design. An individual or a species can be advanced intellectually, imbued with whatever abilities decided and developed, telepathy, shape-shifting, etc., all according to the idea installation that is the consciousness construct. And in this case then, this creature had been as though prompted to target certain individuals. It was its decided and agreed to a function to cause certain consciousness alterations that took place in this curious dimension where it carried out its operation, that then allowed for those it targeted to be imbued with abilities they previously lacked, that when returned to the position in creation they were removed from, so this facilitated the altered individual's ability to carry out certain assignments, objectives, etc., that seemed to overall be of a beneficial nature, as they were overseen by the guides. And so, overall, it was a past life a glimpse of the curious interjection of a creature with a consciousness altering a capability into a my experience, removing me from a position in a creation for many years, returning me and allowing that I can assist and be instrumental in the attempted construction of a portal from Mexico, whenever lifetime and time era it was, a portal that connected to another dimension in a creation, that the project never was completed, but the experience allowed me to do so, by reinserting me back in the lifetime dimension, where for whatever reason we had been unsuccessful. The creature provided ability had been there, for we had no issue in completing it in the reinserted experience. Da -da, that was great, uh, Kevin. Yeah, that was really cool. And so you went everywhere in that one, didn't you? Yeah, and Mexico, too. Yeah, so yes, Mexico's the spot right now. Uh, we're having fun down here and we're bringing it all together. But uh, what you're uh, presenting there to everybody, that should wow them. And it'll take a little while for them to figure it out. But eventually they will as we keep uh, presenting what we do here. And so... While you were talking, I was making another uh, new group on uh, Facebook uh, with Kelsey here. You, Kelsey, and the kids, you're spreading it all over the place, so it's really cool, and you're bringing yourself up to par here these past lifetimes. That sounds fun, so a lot of people are into that. Yes, thank you so much, Kevin. Great. Thank you. And so, sing the new you song. It is your connection to the real universes, the true reality of the all is, that the real you, your real awareness, is a part of. New you, you.